from the title of this video i am going to share with you what you are supposed to know about brooding of organic broiler chicks i want to immediately get into the topic because i want you to get the value from each minute of this video organic brooding of broiler chicks can be seen in these six sections number one is feeding number two hydration or watering number three ventilation number four temperatures number five lighting and number six biosecurity i am going to discuss each of these topics in depth telling you what to do to, to ensure no deaths when brooding your broiler chicks as you lay a foundation for faster growth rate in your organic broiler chickens getting into the first topic that is feeds or feeding the aim in organic chick brooding is to get the chicks to feed as soon as possible after arriving on the farm to do this have 50 percent of the floor covered with brooding floor paper then flood 75 grams of feed per chick on it to help the chicks find the feed easily as you take advantage of the natural scratching order of chickens to get the chicks start feeding as soon as possible feeders should also be filled with feed to ensure a smooth transition from paper feeding to now feeding from the feeders if your brooding room is large and you cannot afford to buy a brooding floor paper to cover the whole floor, cut the paper into strips where you can pour the 75 grams per chick feed on it. Airy feed intake helps in faster development of the chick's digestive system and utilization of the egg yolk. This faster development of the chick's digestive system and utilization of the egg yolk which remains when they hatch helps to improve the proper utilization of nutrients in the feed which improves growth performance held and increased yields later in life of the broilers make sure you confirm early feed intake by palpating or for filling the crop fill 95 percent of the chicks should have a crop they are crops full of feed and water after 24 hours when filling the crop to check if it is full do not do it gently to avoid feed and the water pushed upwards therefore getting into the respiratory system causing even death starter feed for brainer chicks is best given as scrambles the reason as to why starter feeds is best made and fed in crumble form is because it reduces feed wastage discourages selective feeding and increases feed utilization after week one change the form of the feed and start feeding them with the pellets now some chicks adapt easily to an abrupt or immediate change from crumbles to pellets but others do not to solve this problem use this formula to gradually introduce the pellets that is in the day one of the feed change mix 75 percent of the crumbles with 25 of percent of the pellets and give them day two 50 percent of crumbles plus 50 percent of pellets in day three 25 percent crumbles and 75 pellets and from day four of feed change onwards now you can be giving them the pellets but before we get into this video kindly if you haven't subscribed to our youtube channel make sure that you hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell notification so that every time that i post another educative video youtube will alert you also make sure to hit that like button and also the share button because they help this video to be shown to more farmers so that they can be able to get this important information you can also tell us where you are watching us from and leave your suggestions Question and questions in the comment section below the second thing when it comes to organic brooding of chicks is the watering that is the hydration water should be offered to the chicks ad libitum that is throughout at all times the water should be fresh clean and easily accessible feed intake is directly proportional to water intake meaning that low water intake for whatever reason will lead to a decrease in feed intake the correct temperature of the water offered immediately at the arrival of the chicks at the farm should be 15 to 20 degrees celsius afterwards the water temperatures should be maintained below 25 degrees celsius if you are using the nipple drinkers make sure you lower the nipples to the chicks eye level for the first two days to enhance clear visibility 
adjust the nipple drinkers slightly higher after attaining the early intake that is after 24 hours to reduce water spillage on the litter. Here is a table showing the angle of the nipple drinkers as the cheeks grow. Early water intake means that each cheek should drink at least 1 ml of water each hour for the first 24 hours. The flow rate should be one that ensures that there is a drop of water hanging under the nipple without dropping. Always check the nipples to ensure that there are no air locks, which can lead to low water intake. And as I mentioned, it will lead to decreased feed intake. The third thing is ventilation. Ventilation is a crucial factor to consider in young breeder chicks. Air exchange is very important in organic breeder chick brooding. Poor expulsion or removal of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide causes low feed intake, low water intake, and also decreased cheek activity. Ventilation is required because it helps in expulsion or removal of these bad gases and excess moisture. High humidity or moisture levels in cheeks during brooding will cause wetting of the litter, which predisposes or exposes the cheeks to diseases like coccidiosis later in life and also severe heat stress if the temperatures increase and this is because in high humidity conditions panting which as a way of losing excess heat during heat stress becomes ineffective the sides of the chicken house should have curtains that can be raised and dropped and this is because for example in windy days the curtains should be lowered to avoid that draft of the wind the fourth thing is lighting Chicks need the light to see the feed clearly, and proper lighting in the chick's house helps to st stimulate early feed and water intake. At the placement of the chicks, that is when they arrive at the farm, the light intensity should be 25 lux, which should be measured at the chick's level and also at the darkest place in the room. The difference in the light intensity between the brightest and the darkest place in the room should not exceed 20% so as to ensure uniform lighting. This is for organic breeder farmers who carry out brooding in large chicken houses due to the high number of chicks. On day one, start with 24 hours of light and one hour of darkness to help the, chick get the chicks get used to the switching off of lights which will be carried out as the chicks grow. The fifth thing is the temperatures. Preheating, that is warming up of the brooder before the chicks arrive at the farm should start not later than 48 hours before. Ensure that the room temperatures is at 32 degrees Celsius 24 hours before the chicks arrive at the farm to allow heating of the litter and the floor. Litter temperature should be 30 to 32 degrees Celsius and the floor temperatures should be 28 to 30 degrees Celsius during the placement of the chicks from the parking boxes after arrival on the farm. This is because chicks usually absorb and lose heat using their feet and their body. Therefore, special attention should be given to the temperatures of the floor and the litter to avoid heat or cold stress to, de to the delicate chicks. After five days, the chicks can now start to regulate their own body temperatures and start being less dependent on the environment or the heat from the heater. From day 10 to day 14, the birds should be able to control their own body temperatures and the heaters can be eliminated. Optimum or the normal body temperatures of chicks from day 1 to day 5 is usually 40 to 41 degrees Celsius and from day 5 onwards it's 40 to 41 degrees Celsius. This is very important to know because any changes beyond these temperatures that I have mentioned will indicate that there is a problem. The sixth and the final thing is the biosecurity. The biosecurity is to ensure that you vaccinate your chicks, that is, ensure that you get a vaccination schedule from your chick supplier. Number two, ensure that there is a food bar at the entry of the brooder and hygiene of the equipment and the chick handlers. The other thing is that you should fence the farm to avoid intruders and use appropriate mesh wires and on the chick house to keep away predators and wild birds that expose the chicks to diseases. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have learned something new that you are going to apply in your brooding to avoid death or losses. Hit the video that is on your screen right now to know the organic supplements to treat sicky and dying chicks.